Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Uh, this is a quick update on the Quantum Whisk slash Pico 32 slash the, the Saisky 32-bit um, board. Um, I've been enjoying this quite a bit. Um, so much so that I had to get another board. But I ended up burning a FET. If you can see that, that is supposed to be this one here. Should look, this should look just like that. Let me get something to point with here. So this FET that I'm touching should look like that. Uh, what I ended up, it, it did kind of work for a while after I burned that FET, but eventually it started yawing hard right, hard, excuse me, hard left all the time, and started having irregularities with battery performance. Um, so I ordered another one, I've got it inside here and I've been enjoying that ever since. Um, I've actually got a couple more on order because coming up I'm going to be building a picnic frame. Uh, this weighs, I think it's 3 grams less than the Wisp, um, and you can get these, this is two different plates, I think, combination I think cost about 12 or $13, uh, because you can buy uh, this plate and this plate, they come uh, separately, so like one might be $5 and the other one might be 6 or something like that, but they're really nice, nicely assembled, uh, but that'll be coming up when I get those other boards and motors in, which are on the way. Um, on this unit itself, I'm no longer running the Hobby King motors. Uh, I, I thought the performance wasn't very good. Um, and at 53 grams, I had 60 plus percent throttle in order to make it just hover. Um, the camera I'm pleased with, it does pretty well. You do see that, unlike in my first video, I've got a little hot glue on here. I did refocus the camera. I'm not sure if I actually changed it or not. Um, or if I just knocked it loose in a crash that I had here in the house and then it got out of focus. Um, also, when I installed the new boards, I used some uh, micro leads off the solder pads so I wouldn't be soldering and unsoldering every time the motors burn out because brushless motors do burn out. But something we have to consider is that these motors, we're not going to be running them for hundreds and hundreds of flights. They might last. I don't know, they might last 100 flights, I'm not sure. These that I'm currently running uh, are the Micro Motor Warehouse uh, 802015s. Um, and I've got some more 802017s on order, actually two sets. And I did order two more sets of Hobby King motors just to see if the ones I got weren't very good performers or not. Uh, something else that I've noticed that um, when this tends to crash, it does end up upside down a lot. So it's, it's important to try to protect, in my case, my antenna um, provides some protection, but we're trying to protect the motors because these micro motor warehouse motors, um, depending upon which ones you get, if you get the 80, 20, 15s, I think they're uh, $27 for a complete set of four. If you get the 80, 20, 17s, which are the dark editions, uh, I believe they're $31 for a set. So they're, they're kind of, in the scope of things, kind of expensive. Um, so the hubs and props are pretty important because the hubs and props actually uh, sit down flat on the motor housing. So when you do have a crash, it hits the motor housing and doesn't push the prop or the bell casing down through and then you end up with a disconnected motor which by all accounts uh, is unfixable. Uh, so you have to replace it. Even if you get it back in there, they rarely run right. Uh, the manufacturing is so fine and, and small that there just isn't any tolerances that for that. Uh, some people do put epoxy or something on the bottom of their motor housings in order to try to keep that in. Um, but if you use these hubs and props, that really shouldn't be a problem. You can use other props, but you need to drill them out all the way through. And even then, I'm not sure that's the fix because you still have the motor uh, stem sticking out. And if you have a hard crash upside down, and it does push your props, if you've got them drilled out through, you still have the motor stem sticking out, so you may end up with a, a casing that pops on it. Uh, you can also see from that angle that I've got my Palolu voltage regulator in there. Um, I did order some um, micro JST connectors to use there, but I, I may or may not use them. It depends. When I get to building that other uh, picnic frame, I, I may try them out. Um, some people are reporting that even when they use these to power their camera, that they're getting uh, noise. So it may not make any difference how you get power there. You're still going to have to have a regulator in order to have a clean picture. Uh, sorry, I, back to the protection. 
I found that this configuration, this is kind of a double wide uh, rubber band. Um, this configuration with a knot on top allows me two things. It's easy to pick up, squish your battery in there, and it also provides some protection when you land upside down. These things are so light that just about anything above these props is going to dissipate some of that impact. Um, so it's something you might consider. You'll see with mine that I do have some uh, foam tape here on the bottom holding it down initially. And then if you look closely, if I can, let's see if I can find a good spot to show that. Um, you can probably see it a little bit there. I've got hot glue on each of the four corners to give it some more stability. Uh, and the main reason for that is when you're plugging it into clean flight all the time, that can disturb the tape enough to where it kind of pops up and pops down. That was a problem I had last time around. Um, one last thing is batteries. Um, I posted a question on RC Groups and didn't get much of a response so far, but it was just yesterday. Uh, I've been using these Nanotech batteries, which are a nice lightweight battery. They're kind of pricey. Um, and I've also been using, you know, generic batteries. I bought some generic Tenergy batteries just to see if they were any better. Um, but of all these batteries here, this one's just too heavy. It flies like a boat, in my opinion, with this. You can get away with it, but once you get in forward flight, you're not going to want to stop here or have anything you're uh, in your way that you're going to need to make a quick move away from because you just don't get that quick a thrust on these things. You've got to be pretty precise all the time. Uh, but my favorite battery is this one. Uh, it has the longest flight time. I, I get the most thrust out of it. Um, I'm not sure what the numbers on this mean, but I did. I got these from Gearbest, and I ordered some more. I'm curious if I just happen to get a good batch, so I'm not going to actually link to the product. Um, if I get my next batch in, and I find out that they're just as good, and maybe these numberings are a little different because the picture doesn't show these precise numbers um, that I, I'll link to the product but I in my opinion it's not worth the extra dollars to buy any of these nanotechs I didn't see any change in flight characteristics actually I thought they were worse uh, than this battery and I've also flown some of these other generics like this um, which oddly enough uh, as far as your thrust goes or your punch and your run time these are just about as good as this one. Uh, of course, this one is you know 380. Uh, this one is a 380 as well, and this one's only a 300. Um, but I did expect a little more out of this. But I really don't think. I think the only difference between this and a generic is the weight. So you get an extra extra um, 80 milliamp out of, out of these generics versus this one. And I think, if I recall correctly, this one is two grams lighter, which two grams is significant but it's not nearly as significant as seven or eight, which is the difference between these batteries or even these batteries. Um, so that, that's something you might want to consider is you, you might want to try multiple batteries before you actually start spending a lot of money. Buy some of the generics. I think I bought a pack of five of these for less than $10 off of Amazon of all places and got them through our Prime membership and got them in real short order. and. These are just as good and, uh, as these others. Um, these might give you a longer run time if you're just like powering the camera or something. But in actual use, flying FPV around the house with all the interference that I have and banging into things like I do, I'm just going to stick with running this one first because I only have one of these. I I bought a bunch of these for the uh, the Mold King 33041, and um, I bought six of those Mold Kings, and I ended up giving away as Christmas presents. And so um, the packs of these that I had, I ended up putting those in so that people would have extra batteries when they flew, that they could they could fly two batteries before they needed to go back and recharge. So I only have this one left. Uh, I do have some more order. We'll see what happens. But I've been uh, pretty happy. The, the, the weather here in, in the Midwest, um, when it's not snowing, it's really cold. And I'm not into flying when it's cold. Um, I know that the people in this area have gone out and done some flying when it's bitter cold, but uh, that, that's just not fun for me. Um, but it is fun to fly around in the house 
and this has provided a lot of good stick time for me and it makes our cat crazy um, it's kind of funny to run this around the house and then you you turn around and he's he's standing on the back of a couch or something waiting for that thing um, he hasn't swatted it out of the air I think if he does that I might have to get on him um, but yeah it's it's provided a lot of hours of fun I, I don't have any flight footage I just haven't been recording it um, if you guys want to see some flight footage um, I can do that, <laughs> you know, my, I, I just fly for fun, so I'm not gonna, I'm not Mr. Steel or Freybot or any of those guys that are just really fantastic professional uh, quad pilots, um, but I can post that if you guys would like to see it. Um, if you have any questions about this, uh, oh, one thing, I gotta step back. If you're running um, beta flight, so you have the clean flight app. You still have to have the clean flight app to run beta flight. And beta flight is basically just flashing a different set of settings um, for your flight control board. And it's made by Boris B, if you didn't know that. And he's a, 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 an awesome pilot and he's also obviously a really great uh, coder. Um, but if you're running Micromotor Warehouse or Chioli Motors, I think that's how you say it, Chioli um, Motors, there is a setting within Betaflight called RC smoothing, and when you turn that on, it completely changes the the heat of these motors. Um, when you when I was running standard clean flight, which I did run on this board after I initially got the replacement, um, when I was running clean flight and I'd fly, these motors got really hot to where if your finger was near it, you could feel the heat radiating off the can. Um, and I switched over to Betaflight just because I liked it better. And um, beta flight flew better, but the can still got really warm. And when I turned on RC smoothing, and you have to go into the command line within the clean flight uh, GUI, and you just type RC underscore smoothing equals on, hit enter, type save, hit enter again. That cool, I don't know what it does, I need to look into that, but it cools these motors down and doesn't change the flight performance at all. Um, matter of fact, I think it get, I get slightly more flight time, maybe an extra 20 or 30 seconds possibly, maybe it's as little as 5 or 10, but it, it feels like it flies a little bit longer. It doesn't decrease the punch that you have, it doesn't decrease its agility, um, but there's something that it's doing in order to decrease the temperature of the motors, and when you have these brushed motors, temperature is likely one of the big causes of its death outside of a crash. Um, so I've flown the last a half dozen or, or ten times uh, with that setting on and I, I think um, I would definitely, and that's why I'm mentioning it here, recommend it for anybody that's running uh, beta flight. It doesn't work in clean flight. There's no variable called RC smoothing. So in clean flight if you actually type that under RC underscore smoothing in um, and you hit save, it'll say, I believe the message is um, unknown variable um, you have to have beta flight flashed uh, to your pico or Saiski board um, in order to use that setting but it's really good I, I enjoy that quite a bit so um, a few things you might take note of hubs and props the clears are this is I've only used these that you see on it I have uh, I bought two packages of like four sets or something like that and I've only used these four and I've nicked and bumped and hit things I've uh, been flying through some of the kid furniture that we got as a fun little course and they're great they're very flexible and by all accounts people are talking about how these hubs and clears are more durable than the colored ones um, I found mine on Amazon um, I, I think they're a little bit more expensive than buying from the Hobby King I think Hobby King props are only like a dollar and a half or two dollars but these are gonna run you probably about a uh, dollar a set um, so this Plus this is this. I, I enjoy it. It's uh, a lot of fun. Um, I can't wait to get outside and fly the big quads again. But for right now, this providing me lots of entertainment. I appreciate your time, everybody. I hope you're out there flying safe and you've registered your drone if required to do so. Keep them in the sky and uh, like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.